away. Let's All right. start talking about balance uh, some updates, of the tempering changes season that are six come, and expansion uh, patch 2.0. The massive so, update. Uh, tempering is a system that we introduced back in uh, season of Weapon Reborn, tem- uh, season oh, four, or multiplicative. Uh, that gave you a way to really customize okay. your items and kind of make make your build your own. And uh, we've received a lot of feedback on the tempering system, and we're really committed to iterating on and making sure that this system is is the best it can possibly be going forward. One of the key points of feedback that we heard was around weapon tempers. So these affixes that you get to attach to your weapons, right? Your weapons are your big, important part of your build and your character. And there was a big disparity here, where some affixes that were on weapon tempering were multiplicatively increasing your player power, right? Things like uh, double projectiles or things of that nature, or bash cleaving, which uh, was a multiplicative bonus. And others, not so much, right? Uh, you had some other ones. Yeah, the that flurry were, size, were, uh, twisting blades. Size <laughs> like, those were memes, man. And they just were, were hard to compare against each other. And so uh, going forward in patch 2.0, we've made all weapon tempering affixes multiplicative damage increases, oftentimes to very specific skills. And to accommodate this, you know, we already have one bonus projectiles, and now we're going to have new affixes that are that give skills chance to deal double damage, which means if, uh, if triggers the chance to deal double damage, the entire skill is just going to do twice as much damage as before. Every hit of it will deal double damage. It's kind of an all or nothing kind of deal. That's going to be so crazy with like And then the chance to hit twice is the chance for any time it deals damage, you just get an extra hit of damage. And this allows you to trigger things like lucky hit procs or anything that counts the number of times you deal damage. That's going to trigger an extra time with the hit twice. Um, Offensive tempering affixes, these are the ones that can also go on your weapons, but can go on other spots as well. These are going to be additive damage increases. And these will often be to broader categories like bonus fire damage or bonus critical strike damage. Um, And whereas the weapon tempers are often talking to more specific skills. And so here we can see an example with the Shadow Augments execution, where we have the Sever projectiles chance to cast twice, uh, but now we've got new ones that are chance for Reap to hit twice. So you cast Reap, and every target you hit, there's just a chance to get two hits on that target instead of one. And Corpse Explosion, whenever you cast Corpse Explosion, there is a chance for the entire skill uh, to deal double damage to every target that it hits. Uh, additionally, we we moved those size and duration affixes, which we think are really cool and really interesting ways of modifying your skills. We've moved those over to the utility. Well, that's good. So they're not directly competing change. with these multiplicative damage increases. You, yeah, because you want to get like that, oh, grenade size damage, and damage, to, but they're both you know, on the same. Area hit a little so, bit larger but... or to have a longer duration on a buff. Uh, so there's not as much opportunity cost to investing in those size and duration affixes, which good, are still good. really cool uh, ways to customize your character. We just don't want them to compete with damage. And finally, uh, we know that uh, oftentimes tempering leads itself to, hey, I I see this list of uh, five or even six affixes sometimes. Uh, We really are going to try to be limiting tempering recipes to at most four affixes that could possibly... I'd rather than just let us choose the temper. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Just let us choose it. And just be a little bit easier to, to kind of comprehend. And even so... We, we're trying to set this limit at four, but oftentimes we're aiming for just three on the recipe, depending on you know how the you know grouping them together in ways that make sense. Um, so this is an active uh, area that we're working on, really trying to make sure that it's it, it's not quite it, it's easier for you to get the the right affix out of the temporary recipe by limiting that uh, the number that are on there. All right. Uh, next up, we've got changes to Ooh, ultimate skills. Ultimate, so ultimate skills getting changed. Can now wow. gain skill ranks. Uh, this is probably pretty self-explanatory, but just like every other skill in the game, ultimate skills now can be ultimates can actually five, maybe be good. Three. And just like every other skill, increasing the skill rank will increase the damage. And invest the into a uh, hard man. Also going to uh, give you cooldown reduction on these ultimate skills as well. So oftentimes, other skills you just kind of get one or the other, right? Sometimes it's a cooldown reduction. Sometimes it's a damage or healing increase. Uh, on ultimate skills, you're going to get kind of the best of both worlds. It's going to be increasing the damage output and reducing the cooldown. Like people mentioned, it's going to be more and, like D3. Uh, finally, uh, and then Wrath of Berserker. Bonus skill ranks on this, such as, you know, Harlequin's Crest, the Shaco, that gives plus to all skill ranks. These are only going to apply to ultimate skills that you've already learned in the skill tree. Oh, so and you this can't equip multiple. Sure you still okay. can only That's equip one ultimate skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, like, get plus ranks to uh, to all skills and then suddenly have access to. I, I, I can't do skills. Cataclysm, Grizzly Rage. <laughs> Uh, but you're just going to be getting, uh, you're going to be able to, to really juice that that ultimate skill up. If you really want to make, you know, last rate be really strong, that's going to be a, a powerful effect that you can invest more skill points into. 
All right, so those are some of the general updates. Let's now talk about the new content coming All for right. each individual class, starting here with our Where's barbarian. the spirit barn, though? Oh. All right, so sometimes Wait, new skills? you're playing as a barbarian and you experience a problem, right? You are standing Wait, here. this is a new skill, right? There is an enemy over Is there. this not a new skill? What to do? Well, a good barbarian is going to throw their weapon at the enemy over there to kill them at a distance. New skills, right? guys. So now we've got a new right? skill called Mighty oh. Throw. It's going to hurl your weapon yeah. at an enemy. It's going to deal damage on impact. And then it's going to stick in the ground and do some pulses of damage over time. So even if the initial impact doesn't kill them, there's going to be some extra pulses there. Oh, okay. So now with the... Additionally, we've got some uh, upgrades. The for third it, sword? Like skills. Uh, enhanced Mighty Throw is going to increase your attack speed while the weapon is Dude, this is awesome. And then you can either opt in a fighter's mighty throw which is going to give uh bonuses to the, that pulsing damage dude that's so cool this is just in like the new season you just get a new skill for more and give you a bit of barrier hopefully each class gets or one gonna opt or two mighty, warrior's mighty throw which is going to dramatically increase the initial impact damage and it's going to stun enemies on impact let's get, take a video clip of this in action all right so we've got barb uh just simple example here with a few enemies reminds me of like a, what is that, this, the boulder uh, barbarian ephemeral and, uh, version D3? of the weapon uh, lands, deals a big chunk of damage, and then pulses over time before returning back to you. Cool looking skill. I was a huge fan of double throw in Diablo 2, so this is really exciting. <laughs> yeah, it looks sweet too. Uh, it kind of like bluish yellow, um, like ancient y kind of uh, color scheme to it. The VFX looks awesome on it. So, range barb is definitely happening in patch 2.0. For sure. If you want to spec really heavily into this, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to be uh, throwing weapons out like crazy. New passive. All right, so we've also got some new uh, oh, yes. passives and new legendary paragon nodes for for every class here. Every so for class. barbarian, we've got barbed carapace. This is going is a key passive, so it's going to increase your thorns based on how much fear you're spending. And whenever you cast a skill with a cooldown, it's going to grant you unhindered for a duration, which allows you to move through enemies. And then enemies that are close to you are going to take bonus uh, or are going to take damage from your thorns every second. You're going to kind of pulse damage of your mm -hmm. thorns every second. I still think that now, spear really one's cool. better really for thorns, thorns, to be thorns honest. Barb, which we had a, a little bit of support for. It works on one every of the big single attack. With thorns is that you you really wanted enemies to hit you and hit you quickly, and uh, this gives you another alternative. Earthquake to deal, dust uh, devils bonus damage or, or to to really pay off for building up all that thorns with this new key passive. Additionally, we've got a legendary paragon node, the Force of Nature. Uh, your earthquakes have a chance to spawn dust devils, and your earthquake damage is going to be increased by your damage against close enemies. So this is really plays into these um, these earthquakes and dust devil effects, which uh, we kind of call sub powers internally. Good. Uh, these effects that are not uh, skills that you cast directly, but you know some of your legendary effects will will spawn these. And I'm guessing those are devils. like this is just a new way to, to really power aspects? those up and and blend them together in the same build. Additionally, we're adding some new passives to the skill tree. Oh, new passives, And too. this has really helped to, to tree, give okay. you a way, along with ultimate skill ranks, to spend a lot of those new points that you're getting by leveling up from 50 to 60. The, Irrepressible you know, would be pretty getting. good with We're giving the you third new, sword. New ways to invest uh, you those. spam it, so... Ooh, All right, new we items. Some new items, of course. Oh. We've got uh, the Ugly Bastard Helm. Uh, <laughs> I like that name. For barbarians. Uh, and it makes you so ugly that whenever you are berserking, all of your damage is converted into fire damage. And so that's really oh, interesting. This is you what know, I love to see. Always had this little bit of like a uh, light fire theme. You had a few different effects that that dealt fire damage. And now, if you really want to play a fire barb, uh, this is the unique helm for you. Also playing into that, we've got aspect of flaming rampage, which causes your charge to deal some fire damage, and aspect of shattering steel, which will uh, cause your steel Do grab and iron maelstrom. This is going to be a good meta build. Damage. All right, oh, moving on to the druid. druid. Okay. The druid gets a new skill, a new core skill, in fact, uh, okay. called Stone Burst. And this is a core skill that's channeled. It kind of has a, a very unique kind of input mechanism compared to pretty much any other skill in Diablo 4. And as you're channeling it, the uh, you target an area, and uh, as you channel it, the affected area grows in size over about one second of channeling. And at any point, you can release the channel, and it's going to deal a big burst of damage to whatever size you kind of landed on there. Cool, it's like a charge up like explosion. Uh, I can, like you that. Tap it really idea. quickly and just do one pulse of damage to a small area. But or I, you can I'll be honest, up for a, a little bit longer. People and don't like channeled skills, area, except for Roland. The, That's the one exception. Combat scenario you find yourself in, or or how the enemies are distributed on the battlefield here. Of course, we've got our upgrades that uh, increase damage to the enemies hit in the initial radius. So you know, really doubling down on that single target uh, capability of a core skill. 
And uh, Primal Stone Burst uh, gives you some attack speed, and Raging Stone Burst will dramatically increase the spirit cost, but also give it a ton more damage. So if you have a ton of spirit generation, then that might be the upgrade you look for. I wonder for if attack speed burst. makes it like Let's see a video of ramp up faster. Action. Okay, let's see. All right, so you see uh, it ticks up. There's like three different levels, like small, medium, and large. Uh, in so it's kind of like a hurricane the, that you cast? Held it for a while, but you could release it at any time. And so here you see uh, just kind of rapid firing a lot of quick small shots just because they knew that would be enough to, to clear out the enemies here. And also while you're channeling, it does some pulses of damage to enemies in that area as well. This is cool. The channel explosion is so satisfying to blow up just so many monsters. Yeah, it gets it really huge and amazing. <laughs> it looks so sweet too. Uh, I really hats, hats off to the uh, the VFX artists who, who worked on, on making these look so beautiful, the new skills here. All right, so of course, Druid also Ooh. has new passives, new, Ooh, a new check key out the new passive passives. called One with Nature that really empowers companion builds. You know, we've heard a lot that players love playing with companions. They're wolves, they're poison creepers, they're ravens, and this is going to be the, the, the key passive for you. So all of your companion skills gain an additional Wait. companion, and they deal oh, increased damage. Oh, but you damage. can. I wonder if you stack that with the. Uh, and there's also a little bonus, basically, other one with the you gain the passive. You'd always play of all of the companion skills. Another now, one. Now, if you're taking this key passive, you're probably taking these companions anyway. But just in case, you know, your build is such that well, I just want to take you know two out of the three, right? I, I can put wolves and poison creeper on my bar, but yeah, you know, ravens get left you, out. Man. You don't have enough skill slots to put in ravens. You're still going to be able to get the passive effect of that when you take this key passive, um, because we just want you to have tons of these companions uh, really leading uh, leading the charge here. Dang, there's We've human got, boost, uh, yeah. <laughs> new legendary Let's go. That plays right into this one with nature key passive. Uh, casting the companion skill is going to increase the companion's, uh, companion active skill will grant you bonus ranks to all of your companion skills for a time to really buff up the damage of those. Uh, just like before, we've got some new passives coming into the skill tree as well. Uh, I think some of these might have some uh, temporary icons on them. So like I said, these were from an early build. Um, some of the icons or, or very specific art might be adjusted. So, you know, bear with us. This is uh, the nature yeah, it's of the I don't think we care too much about the artwork of the little icons, but. All right, moving on to some of the items. Or, oh no, we've got a video. Oh, right, a video oh, of <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> really leading a wolf pack here, right? So this this the includes wolf army uh, wolves build. with the, the storm's companion to turn them into. Yeah, you know, like, I, I actually have the build guide for this um, one. It's <laughs> I'm sure there's it's some pretty other ones here, spammy like, uh, to actually the play. Stampede is probably involved. You just have what is yeah, oh, yeah, seven stampede, wolves yeah. following you around. Uh, you really get to lead the wolf pack with this. It's, it's this is this awesome. is the best video in our presentation. Well, actually, no, sorry. This is the second best video in our presentation. You guys will see the best video in our presentation. Oh, dude, I bet you it's oh, rune words. Just, if they're hyping so something up at the yeah. very end, well, it's got to be rune words or uh, this, this set items. Really it's got to be something I'm, big. I'm really looking forward to playing with this. Or them just announcing that like, the paladin's also going to be in Vessel of Hatred. That'd be All right, crazy. So All right, let's check out the new items. Ooh, yes, yes. This is a uh, unique totem that's going to empower your stone burst, the new core skill. So channeling it is going to grant you some damage reduction, and the final explosion will deal increased damage based on how long you were channeling it. So uh, this just really encourages you to, to build it up to that max size and, and let off a huge explosion. And gives you some damage reduction, so you're kind of standing still for a bit. That's okay. You get a bit of bonus damage reduction. We've got uh, a little bit Ooh, more shred, legendaries yes. on Druid than the other classes, just because Stone Burst being a core skill, uh, we know that the the kind of bar to make a core skill uh, really viable and, and useful. Uh, it does need a good amount of legendary items to support it, to, to really make a full build out of it. So that's why we've added two legendaries here for Stone Burst. We've got the aspect of Anticline Burst, which causes Stone Burst to deal increased damage. And if you cast it at or above 100 spirit here, it's going to immediately be at that maximum size. So you don't necessarily need to channel it as long as you are casting it when you have a lot of spirit. This synergizes really well with the Earth and Might key passive, which gives you full spirit when it triggers. So you can trigger Earth and Might and then immediately get a huge stone, stone burst. We've got Aspect of Shattered Defenses, which alters Stone Burst in a rather interesting way. It causes Stone Burst, or Stone Burst causes enemies to take increased damage from your other skills for a time and reduces Stone Burst spirit cost. This kind of converts Stone Burst um, away from necessarily being your primary damage source to being a bit more of a setup skill, right? You can kind of uh, debuff enemies and then, you know, you can find some interesting builds where you have other ways of spending your spirit, maybe another core skill or, or boulder or some other um, 
primary damage source. I mean, 50 is a pretty big amount, so that means you just have to play it in every single really build. It's like Caltrops now uh, with Rogue. Well, you just got to play it. You make with shattered defenses. Additionally, we've got uh, Aspect of the Rabid Bear, which empowers your Grizzly Rage to apply rabies and increases your poison output. Stormcrow, which is just lightning ravens. Uh, you know, your ravens are now lightning. It looks awesome. And uh, Aspect of the Agile Wolf, which gives Shred a fourth attack. Shred uh, normally is like a, a three-part combo, and now it's a four-part combo that deals even more damage on that fourth hit, and it's going to knock down enemies as well. All right, so that is uh, Druid really looking Ooh, forward to the playing necro, Druid, the new Necro uh, stuff. Let's check but it out. let's move on to the Necromancer, because we've got a lot, lot to get through. Uh, we've got Soul Rift. This is a new Darkness Ultimate skill. So uh, Necromancers kind of had three ultimates already. They had one that was Blood, one that was Bone, and one that was uh, related to Summoning. And now we've kind of completed... So Necromancer just gets a new ultimate. Or I think I'd rather have a new damage like, ultimate. core skill. Soul Rift creates an area around your character, kind of follows with you, that just constantly deals damage over time. Oh, that's good. And it's going cool. to be sucking out the souls of enemies who you're hitting. And every time it sucks out a soul from an enemy, you're going to gain some essence, and you're going to gain a barrier. So you can stack up this barrier. It helps you be survivable, um, and it deals you know really good damage over time. I wonder if it's going to be Supreme good enough to make a build just bonus damage for every like soul a, like absorb, a, um, and prime righteous soul fire the soul and PoE. Also apply vulnerable. Let's take a video of this in action here. Right, so enemies all, all coming up. Super oh, so is it place it on the ground? Charles, right? Or is it like no, around your character? You have another way no, no, you move with it. Defenses. Uh, Necro it's like the Death's Bargain pants. That, right? They should have just yeah, called the Death's Bargain uh, I think and just really added the item into the game here, too. Uh, and I, when we get to cool. the, the uh, next slide talking about some of the passives, we'll, uh, I'll highlight, we're, we're adding a bit more barrier into the Necromancer's kit. But you already had like the Bone Storm. Blood Necromancers always had a really easy time surviving. They had a lot of Fortify and a lot of max health. And... Really, they the other ones like the the bone and shadow uh, necromancer. It's pretty big AOE too. Survivability. and so now we're introducing more barrier in more places to ensure that that kind of non-blood necromancer builds, the shadow and the bone and summon necros, um, have a bit more survivability and are able to scale into that late game pretty well. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, the new passive. So they have a new key yes. passive called affliction. That uh, there's this new concept of affliction where um, af applying vulnerable crowd control, or shadow damage over time effects to enemies will um, apply them with Affliction, which is going to make them take increased damage from you and your minions. Additionally, when you apply a Curse skill to someone or to an enemy who has this Affliction, you're going to do a big chunk of shadow damage. So this kind of turns your, your Curse skills, your Decrepify and Iron Maiden, into offensive skills. You can Curse an area, and then they take a big chunk of damage as well. Um, and then this will scale up with the bonus damage that you've dealt, uh, or, or that you, or the bonus affixes that you have for that crowd control, vulnerable, and shadow damage. And along that same theme, the new legendary paragon node Frailty is going to cause a, cursed enemies to take more damage from you, and so it plays very nicely with the Affliction key passive. And uh, once again, more uh, more skill tree passives to spend those extra points on. And I want to highlight Necrotic Fortitude here in the upper right that gives you uh, it's just a, a generic passive that gives you a chance, a lucky hit chance to gain a barrier. And so that's going to be really good for anybody who wants just a bit more bump of survivability and to play into the more barrier focused uh, on Necromancer. Uh, yeah, going back to Affliction really quick, I love the idea of using my curses uh, offensively, like as a damage skill. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be such a blast. Yeah, yeah, it's Literally. really cool to just, <laughs> yeah, definitely going to gonna be blasting a home. Um, I think it's really thematic too. I, I love playing with it. It pairs really well with the utility changes. Now that we have way more size increases in utility, it gives you so many more mm -hmm. utility options. Those curses get pretty huge um, and it, it feels great. Yeah. Yeah. For all of us who just want to win by debuff spamming, I love that one. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some of the new items coming for Necromancer here. So we've got a Ooh, new unique, unique item, the Unmaker, a unique helm. This is going to empower the Soul Rift, the, the new uh, ultimate skill. Of course, you gain some skill ranks to Soul Rift, because now ultimate skills have skill ranks. And every 30 essence that you spend while Soul Rift is active will increase its duration up to eight seconds. So 
as long as you're active and kind of spending the essence with the unmaker, you're going to have a very long... I can't wait to see Rogue, dude. That's what I really want to see. And then for every essence that you gain while it's active... Yeah, Rogue and Sork for last. Uh, absorbing the souls does trigger essence gain. You're going to do a pulse of damage around you, some, some bonus damage. And so really encourage you to just keep soul rift up all the time, be constantly gaining and spending the essence. And it's going to be really, really fun to, to make that build work. Additionally, we've got Reaping Lotus aspect. This empowers your Sever, your core skill. Uh, Sever will no longer return to you. Previously, Sever was kind of an out and back situation. Now it just goes out, and then it splits into three specters at the end, deals some extra bonus damage, and then that's the, the end of the Sever. So it really does empower it on, on the, the swing out uh, and looks really cool. Uh, we've got Aspect of Fell Gluttony that empowers your Golem. Whenever you cast your Golems active, deals a big pulse of damage around it. And your golem will then consume corpses to reduce its cooldown. So anybody who really wants to, to build around making your golem as strong as possible, this is going to be the aspect for you. <laughs> it looks like the and bone spirit is going to be even stronger. Aspect, uh, which causes your bone spirit to split into three spirits that deal a percentage of the damage. I mean, if you can hit well. all this, uh, the targets with the, the first it's one, really sweet. Uh, so you that means 120 one target, like, and then percent damage. Little, little mini bone spirits to seek out nearby enemies as well. So it kind of gives you increased area of effect. And if there's just one target, of course, it'll reconverge back on that same target as well. But also just adds a you know bit more AOE capability. Yeah, because sometimes there's maybe goal. some stragglers. When you say, oh, this is what matters. This is what so, we care about. <laughs> Rogue. Yes. Rogue gets Dance of Knives. This is a new channeled skill for Rogue. Uh, it's, it's an oh, Resident skill. Sleeper for me. I get and channeled no good. It's a pretty interesting mechanic where it has some charges that will recharge. And the... How long you can channel it is based on how many charges you have. It's going to take uh, one charge per second of channeling, but there's no energy cost or, or just like a normal. Maybe cooldown. we can try Yen's uh, blessing, guys. Channel it as long as you have charges. Uh, usually, like I said, I and hate while you're channeling, channeled you're skills around, in games, except for Whirlwind. At, at enemies nearby, unless you get to move, and uh, you're against movement speed and dodge chance. Uh, really, is kind of like a, a spin to win kind of build. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold here. on. Uh, you've got Enhanced Dance of Knives, which gives you some charge refund as you're moving with it, because that's what we really want to encourage is this constant motion, this this forward um, momentum. And uh, Methodical Dance of Knives <laughs> drops some stun grenades when you finish channeling, or Discipline Dance of Knives will slow Oh, a 20% chance of pierce. Okay. Pierce through the enemies that you're, you're throwing the daggers at. I'd rather just let's run one shot. All right, let, let, let's, let's just check it out. Oh, no, it is mo rogue, mobile. Okay, maybe it's not spinning, that bad, then. Throwing some daggers around at everyone, and... Uh, yeah, this is awesome. For speed uh, farming, this is like the best speed farming yeah. skill. Yeah, and that animation yeah, is just amazing. Absolutely, and you can see there at the end they had the upgrade that drops a bunch of stun grenades at the end. Obviously, enemies were all dead, but you know if you you use huh. this to get into a big cluster of enemies, then you stop the channel, you drop some stun grenades, reset. I'll be honest, I shoot one pen shot, it's killing the whole thing with Andari. Ton of fun. <laughs> Yeah, those are perfect. I don't think like, do we get the lucky hit chance on that one? Slaughtering a bunch of normals and it just it's annihilates 20, the elite. It feels amazing. Twenty two on base. Yeah, and because it's only a chance right, to so pierce, it might not be well. super strong. New key passive is alchemical admixture, and this is empowering your non physical damage. So rogues can do poison, shadow, and cold through their various imbuements. And when you deal three different types of that non-physical damage, the potency of your imbuement skills is going to be dramatically increased for a time. And the more bonus damage that you build on your gear for bonus poison... Oh, you can run uh, Rakanoth's Boots to give you increased. bonus to all, and that could actually really be pretty good. To, to mix and match the different elements, it's really thematic with you know the alchemical kind of theme and uh, really uh, supporting a build of Rogue that we've kind of had in the game, but really wanted to give that robust support of a key passive for but does it have to be done through imbuements? Or can I just use, uh, which like, Which encourages this kind of one-two combo of casting a mobility or subterfuge skill, increases the damage of your next skill, whatever it might be, by quite a substantial amount. So you can, you know, cast your dash, and then, you know, position yourself, cast a big rain of arrows. It's going to be very good for rapid very, fire. Very cool, and uh, actually impacts your your moment-to-moment -moment rotation as well. And, of course, we've got the new skill tree passes as well. Oh, dang, I didn't right, get to see all of them. Hold on. But... We've got the Pit Fighter's Gull. This is the ancestral unique ring. Hold on. Sorry, sorry. I didn't. I We're literally just didn't get enough time to well. screenshot that. One second. Okay, there we go. All right, new items. We've got the Pit Fighter's Gull. This is the ancestral unique ring. Or sorry, just it's a unique ring. It's not necessarily... You can find it before ancestral tier. Uh, and this Pit Fighter's Gull will 
empower your smoke grenade. So your smoke grenade skill will deal in, will increase your critical strike damage and then leave a cloud of shadows behind. And while you're within that cloud of shadows, you're going to be constantly regaining stealth. And so there's a lot of interesting uh, ways you can play off of uh, triggering going into. Oh, this could be stealth, actually really good for uh, uh, stun grenades. Gonna really actually, when you cast smoke grenade. Kind of We've cool. got an aspect of Star Shards. This is a new legendary to directly support Dance of Knives. And the daggers from Dance of Knives have a chance to shatter, dealing, uh, creating more shards of metal that deal bonus damage. And you can now use combo points on Dance of Knives to further increase the channel duration if you've opted into the combo points specialization. Aspect of Poisonous Clouds plays well with Pit Fighter's Gall. When you gain stealth, you create a cloud of poison damage. And aspect of splintering shards, mm. uh, there's just a running poison cuts. Whenever you're hitting a frozen bad enemy, to uh, create some ice spikes. So if you're freezing enemies because you're playing, it's only one twentieth damage of Andarials, Calf. Splintering shards. Uh, I'm probably just gonna play Andarials. It just looks well. way too good. Ooh, the All right, sword. On to the right. sorceress. The sorceress gets a new conjuration skill called the familiar. I can't this even believe you just calls it the sorceress, not a sorcerer. <laughs> it is a shock skill, a pyromancy <laughs> skill, and a frost skill. So you, there's three charges of it, so you can cast it, uh, you know, back to back, and some you summon a familiar of the element of your last skill cast. So if you just cast a pyromancy skill, you're going to summon a fire familiar. If you just cast a lightning skill, you'll summon a lightning familiar. And same with a cold, you'll summon a familiar a cold familiar. And with the enhanced effect, these familiars will uh, do bonus effect. So the fire familiar will constantly apply some burning to enemies that it's around. The cold familiar will chill, and lightning familiar will stun. And of course, they'll, their damage type is going to be based on you know what type they are, so that it'll benefit from all of your you know bonus fire damage. And that aura, Let's Charles, think. is really great, right? To tap into some of the keep or the passives on the sorcerer. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if you, there's a lot of passives that say, hey, you uh, get bonuses uh, against burning enemies, for instance. Now, if you have the fire familiar, can, that's I wonder if you really can play it with a frozen orb constantly, and you're going to have pretty high uptime on having familiars out because of the way the charge and duration works. Let's take a look at this in action. You All right, so fresh initially, we cast glass? a frost familiar here, right? It, okay. It's jumping around and it's landing, it's doing frost damage. Then we cast a fire skill. Now we get a fire familiar jumping around and, and kind of dive bombing on enemies. And then finally we get a, a shock familiar, a lightning familiar here that's going to deal lightning damage. So you can kind of mix and match these uh, depending on what skills you use, what combination you cast them in. And uh, it, it's really flexible. It fits into a lot of different builds. You know, even if you're just a pure, say, fire sword. Did they say there's a limit on this? Just do burning. Was there only like two? This could still fit max? because you're just going to be able to summon the fire familiar. But it, it really reaches its maximum potential as you're you're kind of mix and matching these to, to suit the situation and and apply the, the the debuffs that you want onto the enemies. You can have quite a few of these out for the Sega demonstration. I think we we only have a couple of them out on screen. Oh, okay. There's you can have two. up to like yeah. six, right? Oh, you can have six. Yeah, you can have six up to six. extra conjurations. And, uh, it's gonna make fresh and winter glass. Sense once we get to, it has to be nerfed, guys. Uh, like, about otherwise, it's gonna be items, the best uh, class in the game by a long shot. Because you get like four hundred well, like let's talk about multiplicative damage. It's way and, too good. Uh, we've got enlightenment. Uh, this really also plays into the, the concept of mixing and matching the elements. You see it's got all, all three kind of colors on there. Casting a skill grants a stack of enlightenment, or three stacks if your skill was a different element to the one before. So you're, you're alternating here. And whenever you gain max stacks, you're going to become enlightened, and you get a, a ton of bonuses for being in this enlightened state. But then it, it drops off over time. It's really a reward for mixing and matching those elements, uh, more so than any other key passive we've had on Sork before. And similarly with the legendary Paragon node fundamental release, each fire, lightning, and cold attack you make against enemy increases the damage they take from all sources uh, by 10%. So you really need to hit them with all three types to gain the maximum bonus here. Damn, this is going to be perfect for like fractured right, winter glass. The, the unique items. So uh, Sede bindings. This is a unique gloves, and this plays right into the familiar. So whenever you cast familiar with this unique on, you're going to summon all three elemental variants at once. However, it does come with uh, a bit of restrictions on it. So Familiar's duration is going to be dramatically increased, and it's cooldown reduced, but you're going to have one less charge. Oh, it doesn't so matter how much charge it is if you just get it off of your uh, fracture witness class. Much, but you, know, you press the button once or twice, and then you get the maximum we'll out. They're all over the screen, 
and they're going to last for quite a long time with this with this unique glove. So it's going to be really really powerful to well, if, you, if you're all about this conjuration build, all about amping up the power for the familiar. It's an awesome unique for that. Additionally, we've got new legendaries for the aspect of overheating. After channeling Incinerate for a time, you're going to deal bonus damage to the, the target. And uh, casting Incinerate will uh, refresh and maintain the bonus. So uh, really just powering up your Incinerate. I wonder if you can just tap uh, charged it flash for this charged and you can actually bolts. get more DPS. And we'll, we'll try after it. After you hit a certain number of enemies with charged bolts, your next three casts of charged bolts will no longer send out bolts. They're going to send out big waves of lightning that deal even more damage and it's always going to be a crit i wonder if it works with lamb Ethan. and then aspect so. of elemental constellation once again uh more about the the mixing and matching of all three elements uh casting a one of the elemental skills will summon a matching type elemental dagger that'll pierce through enemies and uh if you the, the damage of that dagger is going to be increased if you get all three of the different element types in, in that time frame all right, so I think. Ooh, uh, ooh. Oh, right, we've got myth, more mythic, mythic uniques. How can I this is what it matters. New mythic oh, unique items. These are okay. the strongest items in the game. A new mythic chest. Uh, we've got Shroud of False Death. And I think the, the really cool part about this is. Do Shred uh, Druid affect, with the uh, Blurred Beast? Maybe. Passives. And this is really awesome as we're adding new passives into the skill tree. This is just a ton of power. For this this new unique, I think uh, Tyros is going to be more like usable it's, for it's everything. But it's plus one to all if passes. If you haven't attacked in the last two seconds, you're going to gain stealth and bonus movement speed. Now, stealth historically has just been a mechanic that has been on rogues and a little bit on druids with the werewolf builds. But now every class, if you get this mythic unique, is going to have some access to stealth. You can, you know, drop out of combat for a little bit, and then you you get into stealth, and you get tons of movement speed to you know maybe move on to the next pack or or move somewhere else in the dungeon. And it's a really simple line. Slaughter enemies all to passes, steal Lilith's favor from allies. All passes, which is insane. Like, it, it's incredibly powerful. Absolutely. And we've also got the Heir of Perdition, a mythic unique helm. And this one has, has an interesting effect. So it, it says, give into hatred and earn Lilith's favor, increasing your damage dealt by 60%. So just baseline, this is a huge damage bonus. And the second line here says, slaughtering enemies to briefly steal Lilith's favor from, or slaughter enemies to briefly steal Lilith's favor from nearby allies. So this means if you're playing in a group with, uh, you know, somebody else who happens to have the Air of Perdition equipped, you are able to steal Lilith's favor from them. Lilith will only favor one of you, and you actually gain double the bonus of this, right? If you you have if you steal someone else's favor, you get 120% bonus damage. And, and they would get zero. <laughs> Wait, uh, why are they like encouraging you people to do No one else has their prediction around. It's just a flat 60% huh. bonus damage, which is still a ton and very impactful for a... It's not too bad. Unique. But like plus three to core skills right. when you I can have plus four to all skills. Wow, okay. That, is so much that was actually a pretty huge like new, new end update. But room and words, hold on. Let's talk about some of our oh, other, oh. Uh, you know, more regular class balance Oh, changes, regular, you know, okay, okay. Existing skills okay. And, and legendaries. So make sure you definitely check out the patch notes. There is still uh, more changes to come, but we're already really deep into this campfire chat and uh, we didn't want to extend it too, ter too much longer. So make sure you check out the patch notes for all the details on those other changes all right. as well. Yeah, thank pretty you. cool that stuff, dude. That, that made that, that made up for like yeah, everything. I'm so excited. Let me know, guys, which class you're playing in season six. Uh, I'm obviously going to be starting out with Rogue. I got to I got to see if they're nerfing on Darius. If that doesn't get nerfed, we have two more things that we do want to really cover off. Oh, oh, hold on, two more. And as Charles had mentioned, um there are a lot of other class changes that we didn't actually fit within the presentation, like a lot of balance specific items. So yeah, we'll check out the patch notes. Guys, and patch notes will be available on our blog. Oh, Red FDR immediately after this. Oh, we got to check that out, guys. We'll check. We are going to jump into some quality of life items, and so Colin, do you want to take the new tech? Temper, quality of life the new tempering thing, thing right? right? Okay, hold on. We're not done. Yeah, I was about I'll to sign out. So we can get to the, the super exciting, cool thing. Oh, oh, move my face out of the way. Um, yeah, so the first one oh, here is... You can, you can select your preferred, preferred town, portal. town portal location. That, that's actually so that's amazing. that's going to work is you're going to open up the map and hover over any You can select where you, you want to click on it. Oh, whoa, it's going to set that as essentially your preferred location, and whenever you town portal, it's going to take you there. That's so cool, this though. this is really helpful. That's a very, very good quality of life. Uh, you just set the it's tree so good for Uber boss location. So I don't have to teleport whispers, to a town where I want five hours away. You don't have to, to salvage, right? Then click on the waypoint, then click on X 
accept. Like it's all very seamless and it's just removing a lot of the inputs that you have to do to get back to town quickly. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then what else was there? Uh, the next thing here is we're adding a dungeon key inventory tab for things good, like good, nightmare good. sigils. Um, so that just gives you more space for more activities. So much room for activities. Um, the next one here is we've done a pretty substantial rework of Monster CC, and this is in the spirit of uh, we want to have really clear. They're really letting us go faster. Between normal monsters and elite monsters, and we didn't like how often you're getting slowed down and how mandatory unstoppable could feel. Um, so you know, it always felt bad to be fighting this huge horde of enemies, and you see this elite, and you're paying attention to the elite, and then like the scope man Mauler comes up and like sneak attacks you and knocks you down for three seconds, and that's the thing that kills you. That always felt like bullshit, right? So I like exactly his terminology. Snappy, like you still feel them. You kind of want to avoid them still. <laughs> Um, but they're, they're much less sort of the reason why you die entirely. So the vampire impale when like the, the two-hander like comes and stabs you and stuns you for three seconds, that's turned into an immobilize. So you can't move, but you can just smack him in the face. Um, and then the werewolf leap is another great example where previously they'd come out of stealth and like, uh, leap attack on you and you get dazed and you walk around confused. And now they just... I'm does, checking for the patch really notes right now, guys. Um, this next change here is small but i think it's a blaster's delight which is all the monsters that had really long death animations all die instantly you don't have to wait for the loot to hit the ground it's very satisfying you know the big ass like spider hosts that crawl towards you when you kill them they pop instantly and all the spiders go and hit the walls and it feels great the zombies feel really good too it, like they, they pop instantly when you kill them um, and it's a very satisfying experience so this should speed up combat quite a bit and it, it just feels really good okay What's the last stuff? Um, the next thing inventory. here is their socketable inventory tab. Another tab for you, for you to put socketables, like oh. gems and other socketables. Oh, other uh, socketables! Rune Lord's confirmed, guys. Other socketables. Um, the next thing, I told you, clip, we took out <laughs> just about all the. Oh, oh, what well, happened to the audio? Rip the audio. I don't know what happened. Then, oh, like, there we go. Click on the plunger and don't get hit by the spikes. That's all been replaced entirely. Um, with just monster packs of varying sizes, and it's just way more seamless. In this case, we only rolled some normal monsters, but sometimes it's a couple of elite packs. You never really know what you're going to get. It's like an Easter or a Kinder Egg, I should say. Um, and it just helps the dungeon flow substantially, like to just sort of blast through those things. And then a handful of dungeons have had their procedural logic updated, just so there's more var variation in the layouts. So when you play it, soccer ball, dude, it's, it's got to be rumors. Really That's the only thing on our dungeon sets make them feel much more. If that comes out in season music, seven or the down. second expansion, and then the next one here. Oh, is, I'm is hoping it's minor, season six. It actually feels uh, pretty good, and it has a big impact on the game. When you get those paragon and level up notifications, we're actually going to tell you how many. So sometimes you'll realize, oh my god, I have like 15 skill points I can spend. Um, and it actually tells you the number. It's a nice quality of life change. Yeah, no, that's so, really good, man. I think that's everything. Awesome. Thank you, Colin, for running through quickly. <laughs> I appreciate the efficiency of <laughs> all right. uh, going through all the quality of life that, changes. That was it, right? Um, Is there anything Now else? I know uh, Jeevan has been very quiet over here. He's only oh. chimed in a little bit. Oh, okay, uh, hold on. Big announcement. We do want to talk about a new thing that is coming to Vessel of Hatred specifically and for Vessel of Hatred players. So Jeevan... Will you uh, will you talk us through it a little bit? This is the big announcement, guys. Yeah, so it's uh, it's my privilege to kind of talk about a, a feature that the whole team's been working very hard on that we haven't really um, mentioned much. And you know, we we uh, looked at the expansion. We had all these cool things, you know, um, torment. New class, it's okay. Skills, I already know about it. David Kim actually announced old... Rune Words yeah. way and back we, in like we 2020. To particularly give but it's Rune Words. Build crafters a new way to play. Yes. For Vessel of Hatred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for, this is for Good, folks it's got to be the Rune Words. Like me, uh, whose dream cooking show has nothing to do with British baking, but instead would be called Colin's Kitchen. Um, Twitch <laughs> chat, if you would binge Colin's Kitchen, let us know. Um, so uh yeah let's oh, and i think yeah. some of you already I kind of have an idea <laughs> um so yeah let's uh let's let's get into uh as, as some of you already know we're going to be talking about rune words oh it's it is yeah. confirmed guys so Holy. um let's let's start with a little oh, background. Yeah. um so yes. rune words were in diablo 2 
and they were a very powerful way of augmenting gear. The big surprise, the dude. This is what people and wanted. There's a lot of good sort of nostalgic feelings. They were popular. They were remembered fondly. You can look on the right. That's one of the most iconic um, examples from Diablo 2. Uh, the, 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 the name is Enigma, and you would make it with runes, Ja If Burr, and it would get you some some really cool skills that would come out of it when you put it all together. Oh, it's basically just teleport, man. Um, and the rest and of the stats are pretty for, good. For Diablo but... 4... We wanted to retain the soul of what Diablo 2 Rune Words did, which is combining socketable components and creating more powerful items. Um, but we also wanted to do something that felt appropriately fresh and new. And we wanted to lean into what's unique about the modern game to make the Diablo 4 version of Rune Words and make it stand on its own and really feel like the right version to, to be giving to players. Yeah, and what, what was so awesome about Diablo 2? Really it's exactly like, David Kim's Diablo entire design. I, that made it's the same. I actually know how it works. I'll make a dedicated so video, on other classes, an updated one, but it's the exact same. Across the screen. We really wanted to embrace that in a way that extended builds and, and didn't necessarily enforce you must play with this item. And we're really excited. If you guys didn't know, he was before, sort of I don't know at what point he left, but he was, yeah. and he you, was you the one that showed off that at the very you, beginning. You started with from the base game, and we want to add on to those. In 2020. So it's like when you use this, so, you gain that, right? What are rune words? They're a way for you to make your own spells. So there are two types of runes. Can make There's your own spells. Ritual, Whoa, hold and they on. they specify actions from the player that they have to trigger. I feel like this could so be a, its own video. Of the Yule rune, which is a uh, legendary quality rune of ritual. You have to cast a skill, which has a cooldown. So, you know, Frost Nova or something like that. Then you have Runes of Invocation. And these grant powerful effects as a result of satisfying those Runes of Ritual. So the example here, the Gar Rune, gives you 2.5% critical strike chance for 5 seconds. And you can stack up to 10 times, to 25%. And you can mix, mix and match these. There will be a lot of different Runes of Ritual and Runes of Invocation, and you can put them together as you see fit. So when you combine a Rune of Ritual and Rune of Invocation, you pair them together, you put them in an item with two sockets, boom, you form, form a Rune Word. It's, and yeah, as you all can the tell, there's going to be rarity. Runes. We're going to have Magic, Rare, and Legendary, and the higher rarity runes will have more potent conditions or effects. So one of the, one of the important elements of this is called Offering, which is the Rune Resource System. So your Runes of Ritual will generate Offering, and they're meant to feed into their linked runes of invocation so that they can consume that offering. And the sort of more demanding rituals that we would ask of you as a player gain you more offering. At the same time, the more powerful invocations that you would try to get require more offering. And so there's sort of a sort of like shared economy there. So if you can look at these runes on the right, you get 50 offering for casting a skill with the cooldown. And this rune only requires 25 offering for it to trigger. That's where overflow comes in. Overflow is when an invocation receives an offering in excess of what's needed to trigger it. But put more simply, it's we want you to have a mix and match system, but we want the pieces to be um, not super hard, that they can't fit together easily when they have some rough edges. So many invocations can get different bonus effects when overflowed. Some of them might get increased radius to the effect. Some of them might get increased duration. Okay, so but it'll always oh, be proportional okay. to the overflow amount. So as an example here... So you just get two of um, the, the buffs. The Gar rune only requires 25 offering, and it's getting double that, which is 50 from the Yul rune. So every time you cast a skill with a cooldown, you'll get two stacks of 2.5% uh, critical strike, uh, strike chance, or 5% crit strike. And so that's kind of how you get to play with this system, and you get to optimize it in different ways. And it creates a lot of flexibility, right, Jeevan? Like if you do a really demanding ritual trigger, for example, on a really low offering... Um, rune of invocation it's almost a way to start scaling that rune of invocation in a completely different way beyond just triggering the rune exactly yeah it lets us it lets us as developers be more flexible in creating wide ranges of effects you know sort of small ones big ones and and also the same for the rituals and you get to kind of decide which ones you think fit your build or are cool and we do our best to make sure that you can almost cook up anything So a few rules. Okay, um, let's see. Runes can be socketed into items with two sockets. Um, we've added a uh, new uh, another item to get two sockets for Vessel of Hatred. Uh, the uh, so you'll have helm. your helm, your two-hander, your gloves, and sorry, your helm, two-hander, pants, and uh, chest. 
Um, they can only Wait, be paired with a two end of the type. That means so Barb gets to pair rune two rune words. Rune words. <laughs> Barb confirms the best class. You can have a maximum of two rune words equipped. Oh, never mind. You okay. can't equip the same rune twice. And they're available for users who own Vessel of Hatred. Um, oh. They stack in your inventory in the new socketable inventory tab. So you have to have Vessel of Hatred in order for you to be and powerful in the next season. between other players who own Vessel of Hatred. Uh, and they unlock and they said the tradable, quest right? in the campaign. Um, both yeah, oh, they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. runes are tra tradable. Loot, but also rune crafting, which we'll get into later. Oh, there's crafting, okay. Um, and uh, they drop at a higher rate in the Undercity, which is a specific place you can Yeah, I don't, I don't mind them making it like a, an expansion-only thing. Here. I mean, we get to actually see it in action. Cool, 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 cool. This is the Barbarian. Yes. And the rune of ritual they have is travel five meters. Very simple. And they're going to join that to the Earthquake, which is a legendary aspect that you've already so seen. So can, can you unlink it, or is it like a one-time... Why? Oh, you would just unsock it. Okay, I didn't know if you item. you linked it before putting it in. And then all they have to do is just run around. Boom, earthquake it's dropping. Insane with the Paragon legendary glyph we just talked about. Yeah. Oh yeah. The earthquake train is leaving the station. <laughs> what I love about this is it doesn't it doesn't just count your your own walking, right? If you're leaping, if you're charging, that's all counting towards like the distance that you're For moving, sure. right? Oh, yeah. whoa. And you, yeah, uh, you can see it video. here in, like, the Whirlwind, oh. for instance. Like, it's obviously spawning oh. Earthquakes. So. Was that a Druid Petrify Ultimate? That's This is this must be the wrong clip. All right, sorry, guys. You know, we're doing it live. Wait, wait, wait. Let's wait, wait we can get... Next one. We're getting different stuff? <laughs> um, okay, so we have a Necromancer here with the Rune of Ritual, cast a non-channeled core skill, getting 25 each. And then this is a classic from D2, getting plus three to all skills. Um, so you'll get to see... This Necro's got five uh, five skill ranks for Reap and Sever. I mean, that's and just numbers. Gonna, gonna go out and numbers go big. Socketable Harlequin Crest, pretty good. <laughs> so a little pew pew, just doing your basic uh, core skill usage, filling up the offering needed. Yeah, I really like the the little tracking buff that, that fills up as you as you're getting you know, so you know, offering. Really so whatever so condition that, that, that needs hey, to be met, up, and yeah. now I get plus three ranks of seven. And then once that condition is met, yep. So now you're a plus three. There you go. Depending on how much Ooh, like the uh, act, yeah, there's just, basically an active gem and a support gem. And, um... So the active is some sort of condition that oh, you need. Oh, what is this another another Wait. broken clip? Did they just cast teleport? What it what? Uh, <laughs> so, okay, I I think I think you guys teleporting necros. What are you cooking over there, Jeevan? Okay, so you get to add yeah, your... I'll stop Ooh. making jokes, mostly. Um, yeah, so what cool. we really wanted to lean into with D2 Rune Words, among other things, was so we're the gonna ability get to cast other classes' skills and use their power and harness it into your build. So with Rune Words, you're going to get to do that. Uh, each class is going to share two skills and one legendary aspect, like the, uh, the Earthquake one that you saw. Um, and some of them are even going get, to get to cast improved versions. So, for instance, you know, instead of um, the standard Decrepify from the Necromancer, you get to cast Horrid Decrepify. N no more gems. To rip gems. And that's kind of, <laughs> we did that for a lot of reasons. You know, we wanted to make some of them feel a little better. And some like, cost powerful. 500, a lot of it is about balance, That's like so much. One important thing that I always want to um, highlight here is that you always cast the best version of the skill if you have upgrades as the sort of home owner of the class, right? So what that means is, let's say you're a spirit born and you equip the cry rune, which is the vortex spell. If you have points into the upgrade, um, then you'll cast the upgraded vortex when the rune goes off. So I don't think there'll be any class envy. You know, like everyone will get the best version of their own skills, and then they'll get to use other classes' skills. And um, we're really excited to see how people can, can can construct new builds and new archetypes and and what see they, if they can do. do Q and A, using but this is going to be class. really cool. And that says enhanced war cry, so that means necros can become berserk, right? <laughs> Dude, that's just too cool. Uh, this is actually like that's, so good. It, it, war cry is a winner. I guess. I'm yeah, so confident with Deforce Future now. Just chopping up. Remember, the, they're only showing off a little bit. I'm sure there's going to be way more rune words and yeah, more stuff. Really looking forward oh, going to going crafting. Kind of interesting new combinations okay. and, and builds just you can come up with by face by dipping right? into other class skills uh, in. In unique oh, oh wait, oh, put, put really that back on. Like I didn't get to read all the possibilities of, of what you can do with any given class. Yeah, exactly. And okay. it, not only do we want you to augment your builds with other classes' skills, but, you know, runes will scale with gear. 
So when you get more interesting runes of rituals, you'll find ways to optimize them as well and get more output. So we really feel like people will have a lot of theory crafting that they can build off of the rune word system. And I'm very excited to see how you break the game. By the way, that's what she do, she's doing. Okay, there we go. Break, break the game. See every build you can find that, that totally uh, destroys everything. Um, okay. So now we have the crafting element. Yes. Um, so using three of the same rune, you can use them to roll a new rune. Ah. You go to the jeweler, but if you can just trade them, it doesn't really matter. Like it's jeweler, it's whatever. I'm not even worried about it. Um, and you will combine three of the same exact rune, and you'll get a new each rune mythic out, unique that is available to be, to be crafted will require a specific rune and, and a, a spark. To uproll it wow. to the next highest rarity. So if you put three magic runes in, there's a chance that it'll be a rare rune. Same with same with rare. There's a chance that it'll be a legendary rune. Um, and then on top of that, we'll have the ability to craft mythic uniques. So you can use runes. Um, each, ru each mythic unique can be crafted with a specific set of runes. Um, you'll need a legendary, rare, and magic runes of a certain quantity, and one resplendent spark. And this is in addition to the existing mythic unique crafting flow. So um, this yeah. Really... Uh, oh. oh, I was just going to say this really harkens back to the sort of crafting that was so core in D2 um, with the runes of being able to match three and get the next upgrade, but in a way that's a little bit more flexible and gives you more progression out of it. And this is all tradable, right? So that match three, those crafting mythic uniques, what do you think that's going to do with trading? Yeah, I mean, I, oh, I think... Oh, okay, we're going to get a trade house too? A, a sort of player community around... Oh, come on, do we get trade? Runes you need, whether it's because you want to combine, you know, you have two and you want to find that third one to combine for a new one. Or you're hunting for a specific mythic unique. I think we're going to have a lot of player interaction. You're hunting for a mythic unique? Well, mythic unique is tradable? Win the capitalism game there, so we'll see how that goes. I really like how, how the, uh, the the rune crafting system makes it so you're kind of always progressing, right? If you're getting rune drops, then then you're, you're, you're getting materials that you know you can use to progress towards higher rarity runes and potentially towards these mythic unique items. Uh, unlike uh, you know some of the other loot drops, you know if you don't find a good piece of gear, it just ends up being salvage. Here with runes, you're kind of constantly getting some of that progression, even if it's not always the perfect rune right now. Yeah, I think that's something that when we we did talk to a lot of sort of D two diehards when we we built rune words, and one of the things that most of them tended to mention consistently was like every rune drop is progress, right? You're always moving up that ladder. And so we wanted to make sure that even if you didn't get the exact thing you wanted, it still meant something to you one way or another. Yeah, it's like partial currency. Well, I know I uh, we have we've talked a lot about a lot of stuff today. We we had a that progression, was a big update for sure. Uh, like these could have been like two different uh, seasons, uh, honestly. And of course, Dude, the newest thing, which is Rune Words, which will be in Vessel of Hatred. Um, but the one thing we did want to quickly talk about was PTR. Oh, PTR is coming oh, up. Yes, yes. Uh, and we want to give a little bit. Come on, at least Tuesday on what that PTR. Bro, when is this? Is be, and also hear from the team on. Exactly, I'm also looking like, for that the update for uh, from you guys out there that are playing. Like for we're still feedback, waiting for the update. Uh, the update's not yet, the systems. Everything we'll that we've actually talked about today is going to be present in this PTR. So, okay, when uh, is this? All the uh, class balance changes, the progression changes. Uh, the expansion's coming out in one month. Be part of. Uh, the PTR. So we actually do want players jumping in uh, and checking it out. So uh, come on, please right just tell us it's coming PTR out today. Items. When is it? So uh, as everyone knows, uh, PTR uh, from even the last PTR that we had uh, will carry over content from your main account. So if you've already done all your renown, okay, they're probably just going to talk about this. Stat, uh, uh, status will carry over. I'll put the PTR date. Um, in the uh, the description. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for this part because there was so much to cover. If we need to cover in like a part three, but I'm going to make this like just a little bit shorter here so the upload doesn't take like three hours to render. So basically, we're getting new class skills. We're getting new, you know, uniques, which we kind of expect in every single season. But uh, getting new skills is brand new. And on top of that, the rune words is pretty cool. Let me know, guys, what class you guys are playing in season six. Uh, I'm So far, I'm going to be playing Rogue. But that's going to wrap it up for this part. And if there's another one, well, it'll, it'll be out very soon.